Salmon of vanilla, just a salmon of knowledge, 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 just a salmon of knowledge podcast. Hey, Salmon Skins, welcome to an extra episode of Edwin Salmon of Knowledge. If you are a Patreon, then you are a very, very extra special person. And hello, it is always a pleasure to be in your ears. Um, my patrons are beautiful, beautiful people, creative people, kind people, wonderful people. And if you want to become a kind, wonderful, creative person, uh, I mean, you don't have to because you already are. That's right. It was inside of you all along, just like John Hurt and that alien, except in a nice way. Yeah, it's not like a, a terrible creature bursting out of you. It's creativity and love and kindness and soundness. So this is an extra episode of my podcast. I'm going to call it an extra skin because uh, I'm a salmon and everyone needs an extra skin. I mean, you know, you've got one skin on you and sometimes people are thin skinned and they need that extra layer of epidermis just to, you know, block out any negativity, because some people might make fun of you because you don't have the right hairstyle. It's parted on the left, but right parted hairstyles are all the rage. Or maybe you actually don't have any hair and people are making fun of, of that. And, you know, and then if you say something like, oh, it's just a solar panel for a sex machine. And then they laugh at you because that's like a really old joke that bald men make about being bald. Um, but there is truth to it because, you know, uh, bald men have extra testosterone and that's why they've lost their hair. And I say this as a bald man and there's just testosterone just, just dripping out of my eyeballs right now. I better go clean my eyeballs. So, guys, this is an extra episode of the podcast that normally goes out every week and uh, is an exclusive episode. And uh, I want to make uh, more people listen to it. I want to convince people to come on board as I create more things because this pandemic isn't going anywhere anytime soon, even though there is a vaccine. Uh, but I, I don't know, there's, there's vaccines and then there's like, oh, a mongoose has got a, a new strain of COVID-19 and the mongooses are mating with squirrels. And the squirrels might spit in a bat's eye and the bat might fly over and the pangolin might come along and then it's like a weird race. It's like a it's like a virus race and the pangolin's in front and the mongoose is coming up on the outside but the pangolin is a nose ahead and the pangolin's rolled up into a ball and we didn't know they could do that but the pangolin's gone ahead and the pangolin has won the virus race ahead and the pangolin. So, um, you know, in the event that things don't go back to normal, I've just got to make more stuff. I've just got to go online, make more things, do more podcasts. And I've decided to do this podcast as a little sort of uh, bonus thing, but also make it available to everyone so they can maybe come on board and, uh, you know, for as little as three ducats a month, which uh, in the exchange rate, just checking the exchange rate now, Yep, that's three euros a month. So a ducat equals a euro. So you can come on board and you can, you know, if you want, you can get extra stuff. You'll get an extra episode a week. You'll get bloopers. You'll get songs. You'll get uh, very long episodes because normally my podcast is about a half hour to 40 minutes. But there's like hour long episodes on Airplane, on Planet of the Apes. Uh, there's a very uh, special one about my love of Radiohead. For all you headers out there, which is what Radiohead fans are called, I've just decided. Um, and also, I will be getting some video podcasts up uh, in the next while. And I'll be doing some little video game ones um, in the next while as well, if you're interested. So, uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, it's been tough, this whole pandemic. I can't believe I've done 50 and a half episodes, we'll call this a half episode, even though it is an episode going out to everyone. Uh, you know, it's been a strange, 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 strange. It's been a strange, strange time. So I think, you know, that that strangeness has made everyone a little bit uh, cuckoo bananas. 
And certainly it has made me very, very cuckoo bananas. And I've talked a little bit about my cuckoo bananas-ness uh, in some of the extra episodes that I've, uh, that I've put up. And uh, sometimes I can't, I don't know what to say. It's been a difficult time for everyone. It's been a pandemic time, an unprecedented well, time. I mean, these are strange times. God, I mean, it's mad times, isn't it? It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy, just crazy times. Just so, I mean, you've got to hang in there. you just got to keep, keep your going chin up and everything's and you know, the voices overlap so much and then you just kind of come back to earth and you're fine. Uh, but, you know, you do go on a, kind of go off the rails uh, a little bit. Well, I mean, some people do. Uh, and I certainly have. And I just hope that this whole thing ends fucking soon because, um, you know, I'm sick of it. But then, of course, you know, you have the voices come in and they're like, well, you may be sick of it, but the uh, the virus is not sick of you. You know, which is like, OK, that's fair enough. And I get it. And uh, then there's just, you know, ah, well, sure, what can you do? And I'm just kind of you get fatigued about talking about how fatigued you are. And it's gotten to a point now where I'm just doing anything for, for you know, uh, entertainment value. I'm listening to loads of podcasts myself, and I have a pair of binoculars to do my peeping. And just, you know, just regular peeping, not like, not sexy peeping. Because, you know, uh, despite my... Uh, protestations um, people have curtains and they pull their curtains and it's not fair it's not fair on me I want to have good quality peeping going on and it's not happening although when I was doing some uh, work today uh, I'm writing there's another thing you can get on my uh, Patreon page which is exclusive is uh, chapters of a book that I'm writing that's it, I'm writing a book uh, I don't have a publisher for the book. It's something that I'm doing that's keeping me sane because there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things and there's a lot of, uh, you know, you can write a treatment for uh, a play that's set in a room uh, or write a treatment for a short film that's set in a room or a, a screenplay for a horror film that's set in a room and people are on Zoom. But one of the people is a serial killer. Who is it? Whoa. You know, and uh, people are applying for things, and I'm applying for things, and I'm coming up with ideas for TV shows and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you just kind of go round and round, and uh, you're applying for things, and you never really kind of sit down and, and, and do something. So I've been, like, sitting down every day, and I've been writing uh, this book. Uh, what's the book about? I'm not going to tell you. If you want to read uh, chapters of the book, which I think is is fairly good. I've gotten uh, some feedback from some people who've said that they've enjoyed it. Uh, but there's, uh, yeah, there's some um, chapters of it up. And I'll actually, I'm probably put another chapter up today as you're listening to it. Uh, this podcast, that is. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll just withhold the chapters. No, no, I'll put uh, those chapters up there. Um, so uh, I've been doing that to sort of uh, focus my energies into something and to look towards finishing something. I'm trying to get it finished before Christmas and I feel bad that I should have, you know, I should have started it maybe six months ago uh, at the beginning of this lockdown, but I was too busy getting drunk and uh, sort of enjoying the weird dystopian future. And now, like everyone else, I'm just sick of it. Um, and I'm doing things for, like I saw uh, where I live, uh, across the way there's like a, a hotel. And I saw someone on the roof of the hotel. I could see like a little black figure. So I got my binoculars out and I put them up to my eyeballs, uh, as is the way with binoculars. And I looked across and I could see a man on top of the roof of the hotel. And I was like, for a split second, I was like, oh God, I hope he's okay because it's very windy out and he's not harnessed to anything. He's not tethered to the roof and he was like squatting down. And like for a split second, I thought, is that man taking a shit on the roof? And then I thought, no, 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 that's crazy. Uh, he's not taking a shit on the roof. He's just uh, doing something up there. Uh, he's not wearing a, like a high-vis vest or a, or a hat or anything. He was just like a man in a hoodie 
and a pair of jeans. And I was, maybe he's like, I don't know, maybe he's like uh, staying in the hotel and he just wanted to get some fresh air. But then I was thinking, no, I mean, there's no, there's no like guardrail. He's on the very top of a, like it's a flat roof. It's dangerous. And then I was like, maybe I should ring the hotel and this could be a situation. Oh no, he's gone. He's, he's, he's off the roof now. And then I was kind of disappointed because that was like my little, uh, you know, my little soap opera. I was like, oh, I was, I was invested in that. I was, look, I was watching that. And now it's over. And I was also going to record this episode uh, earlier on today, but for some reason, I couldn't do it because, and I tell you the reason, there's not for some reason, this is the actual reason right now. There was this like noise coming from somewhere and I didn't know what it was. It was just this kind of like drilling, sort of grinding, sort of machinery noise that was kind of off in the distance, but I couldn't pinpoint exactly where it was. I was like, I could hear it here in the apartment, but kind of faint, like uh, like a tumble dryer or a wa- sorry, like a washing machine on spin mode. But it had been on spin mode for like hours and hours. And I was like, what is that noise? And in the end, like I've, I said, all right, I've, I won't record now. I'll just do some writing. Uh, you know, I'll do up my, my treatment for my hit TV show that's sure to be a hit and on TV. Uh, you got to stay hopeful. And I I just couldn't. I was like, that noise is driving me mad. And, you know, I'd, li- I'd listen to music when I'm writing. But then I'd stop and I'd, you know, get up and make a, a coffee and contemplate, you know, life itself and come back. And that noise was still going. I was like, oh, come on. That, that, what is what is with that? It's literally been going for like four hours now at this point. And I said, OK, well, I'll, look, I'll get out. I'll do my five kilometer walk uh, where I, I walk to five kilometers from my house and make sure no one is, uh, I just stand there and people walk past. I say, where are you? Where do you live? Do you live within five kilometers of the here? Because I do. I want to make sure you're staying where you're supposed to be. And people hate me around here. They really do. But no, I went looking for the noise. I literally said, I'll go out for my walk and I'll find the source of this noise. And I couldn't find it. And I must, like, I walked out and I was like listening I moved in one di- direction and then I, I, it kind of got faint. I was like, oh, well, it's this way. And then got, oh, no, that, it's not that way. Oh, it's stronger over here. And I, then I realized because it's so windy, the wind is blowing the noise around. So I couldn't pinpoint exactly where it was. <laughs> I ended up walking around in kind of sort of half circles and semicircles and full circles, trying and going down kind of alleyways trying to find out where this bloody noise was and looking in at everyone's, uh, you know, Christmas decorations because some people already have them up. And then I just gave up. I came home and the minute I got in, the noise stopped, which makes me paranoid as hell. Like they were following me, like the noise can see me. And it's like, oh, he's home now. Right, let's stop. Uh, like it was, it was trying to, I was like the Pied Piper of Hamlin. And uh, it was leading me with uh, its grinding noise. And now it's over. And I'm a little bit disappointed. I wanted, I mean, I thought it was just like, I mean, there is like a a building site kind of up the road. And that's probably where it was. Um, But look, I got my exercise. I, you know, I did that for, I only did it for like 20 minutes, which, you know, is, I mean, to be honest, Any longer than three minutes is kind of insane. So maybe I'm going crazy. I don't know. But look, the Christmas thing. Here's the other thing. The the Christmas ads are out. And I just am a little bit... Okay, I'm a little bit cynical when it comes to Christmas. It is a bit of, uh, you know, a capitalist kind of thing. And some people would say, Oh, don't be be Scrooge about it. Don't be an Ebenezer Scrooge about it. And I would say, look, fair enough, you're from Offaly, I get the accent. Oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah make fun of my voice, are you? Well, you're from the same place I'm from, you, oh, you bollocks. Um, but see, the thing about Ebenezer Scrooge is, in the end, 
he learned the true meaning of Christmas. And do you know what it was? Being sound and being nice to people, not buying shit. Uh, that's not Christmas. That is just capitalism. But some people say, well, that's what Christmas is about. It's about giving and beep, 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 beep. And yeah, okay, look, I watched the Super Value ad. If you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, it's this kid going round. And look, it, it suckered me in. I'm not like a heartless son of a bitch. I do have a heart. I'm, I'm actually quite sentimental. And when I watch the ad, in the ad is this that kid who's about, I guess he's about like nine years old, maybe, maybe 10, no older than that. And he keeps saying to his, he's like getting ready for Christmas and he's putting out the please stop here sign. And he's like, oh, uh, he's getting like cookies and stuff and going, these are the ones he likes. These are his favorite, right? And he's like, he's definitely coming. He's definitely coming. And the parents are like, yeah, yeah, he's definitely coming. Are you sure he's coming? He's definitely coming. I told you he's coming. Stop asking. Um, and then they beat him around the head. No, 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 they don't do that. Uh, he's like constantly asking and I'm like, oh God. And I was watching it going because the kid is like nine, ten years old. I was thinking that kid is way, way too old to still believe in Santa Claus. And he was like, you know, dancing away, getting it, pouring out the milk, putting out the mince pies and he's lying in bed. Next thing you hear like a bang like a sh- slamming and a bit of a rumbling, bit of a yuletide rumblings. And the kid gets out of bed and runs down and he goes, Granddad! And it's his granddad, not Santa Claus. And he runs up and hugs him. And I was like, oh, you got me. You got me, supermarket chain. Oh, and I immediately ran out and went to Super Value. And I bought all the mince pies and I bought four Christmas hams and two turkeys. Um, So I was kind of sucker punched. Uh, But I wasn't that impressed by the Woody's ad, which uh, came out like like two days ago or something. And that, just based on my experience of uh, the youths uh, around here, like, basically this ad is like, there's an old lady who keeps come, coming out her gate and her gate is all fucked up. And then at the end of the ad, someone has fixed the, you know, put a new hinge on her gate, spent about three quid uh, putting a hinge on. But of course, it's the thought that counts. Um, and then you see at the end of it is like this little, well, he's like about, probably about 15 or something. And uh, he's got like a screwdriver And uh, you see that he did it, this little 15-year-old young lad, um, you know, inner city young lad. He's like, Merry Christmas, Mrs. Robinson, or whatever. Um, You know, he's kind of saying it to to himself. And he did it, you know, he did it. He didn't tell her that he did it. He just did a nice thing. And I was looking at it going, "Those, those kids don't exist, not around here anyway, because Halloween, they were like throwing bangers. They lit four fires in the green out here. Uh, the green was like had like metal barriers put around it by the authorities. They tried to burn one of the trees. Um, they threw eggs in the window of the neighbor downstairs. And I was watching it going, yeah, I don't believe that those people exist. Um, no, they probably do, but only in ads. And with that... Here's an ad break. But don't worry, it's not a real one. (laughs) It's nearly 9am and you've got a Zoom call. It's three minutes to nine. What are you going to do? That's barely enough time to make toast and butter it. And maybe put a bit of marmalade on it too. You know, in these difficult and unprecedented times, now more than ever, we need to eat yogurt. Yogurt. Portable. Smooth. Comes in various flavours. My favourite is strawberry. That's right, yoghurt. Always a choice for your breakfast morning. You know, these days during a global pandemic, it's more important than ever to eat eggs. That's right, eggs. They're good in the morning. They're good in the afternoon. They're good in the evening. But not first thing before you go to sleep. That's no good. Not a good time to eat eggs. 
eggs. They're more than just the unfertilized embryos that we steal from chickens. And they're delicious on absolutely everything. Stir them up with milk to scramble those eggs. Hard boil them, soft boil them, fry them. Crack them on someone's head just to lighten the mood. Now, more than ever, we need eggs. Pit for the Egg Council of Ireland. You might not be able to see your friends or family, but you've got to keep exercising. That's right, your five kilometer zone is your zone. Own it with a brand new pair of kicks. Get all your favorite kicks Nike, Puma, Adidas, and all the rest. Kicks, put them on your feet and go for a walk. Now, more than ever, people need to walk. So there you go, uh, a series of ads reminding you of what's important. Now, um, on the episode 50 of the podcast uh, proper, I talked about uh, Irish accents in movies. And I had like a list of Irish accents, the best and the worst. And afterwards, I was like thinking about just just bad accents in general in movies and obviously, the queen of accents is Meryl Streep, who has done, you know, Australian. She's done uh, Margaret Thatcher, which is uh, a totally separate accent in and of itself. It's more of a strain kind of hello. She kind of sounds like it's like almost like uh, Voldemort. Um, hello, I'm the prime minister and I'm a Slytherin. And uh, now she's being played by uh, Gillian Anderson in The Crown, which I've watched three episodes of. And it is incredible. I I love that show. I mean, I hate the royal family. Well, not hate. I just, you know, they're just, you know, spongers. And just the whole sort of chosen by God. It's just kind of weird and egotistical. And sort of cruel. I, I, I like. I find myself because the show doesn't really focus on politics um, as such. Even though there is sort of you know there's the prime minister is there. Now you've got the the IRA uh, blowing up people uh, in the show, but it doesn't really focus on the politics. It's more about how uh, people you know deal with their emotions and deal with being human beings, but also being this other thing, like, you know, like uh, the prime minister has a certain, you know, uh, like, say what you will about Margaret Thatcher, and I'm sure many people have, and she, you know, to say, to put it mildly, she wasn't the most popular of prime ministers, but it's more, the show is more about dealing with them on a human level, and, you know, the, the struggle with being the monarch or being the prime minister because it's this other thing. It's kind of, you have to sort of put your humanity to one side in, in a certain respect, because you've got sort of duty and honor and uh, all this kind of stuff. And it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of fascinating uh, in a way. But uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, accents. So um, Meryl Streep, she's she's the queen of accents. But there are some bad ones uh, and there's some good ones. Like Gillian Anderson who I mentioned in the podcast, who did like a, she did a Northern Ireland accent and uh, watching the fall. And there's a couple of Irish actors in it who aren't from the North, but who do pretty good Irish accents. But when I'm watching the show and it's all, you know, set in Belfast and whatnot, and I'm always listening out for the sort of questioning tone because everyone who doesn't have an actual, you know, uh, genuine from birth Northern Ireland accent they all talk in that sort of questioning everything is it goes up at the end of the sentence like you know you can't be in here uh, and it's like no that's not a question I'm the nurse who's looking after this man I'd ask you to leave right now and uh, I'm like no nah, they're not from the north um, but they're very good actors just it's a good show yeah, and Jamie Dornan is um, shot at the end of the second season. And, uh, well, I should say spoilers. Too late now. But then he is operated on in the hospital. 
And there's a really, really long scene of him being prepped for surgery. And then he's, uh, you know, having surgery. And it's like, it takes up quite a lot of the episode. And I was watching it going, do you think, said to Cara, do you think the guy who wrote this is like a doctor who wanted to write a TV show? And he was always disappointed that the surgery scenes weren't accurate because this is going on for far too long. This show is about a serial killer, not about a surgeon. Come on, sort it out. So anyway, listen, um, I just want to give you my honourable mentions because I was still thinking about accents and movies and terrible accents and Irish accents. And uh, I said Kate Blanchett did a very good Irish accent. I don't know if Meryl Streep... Wait, Meryl Streep was in Dancing at Lunasa. I'm going to have to look that up and see if Meryl Streep has done an Irish accent in Dancing at Lunasa. Okay, I have just looked it up. And yes, Meryl Streep did attempt an Irish accent in Dancing at Lunasa the film adaptation of the stage play. And it's not that great. Meryl, she can do a plethora of accents, but she can't do Irish. She's just fallen into that trap of doing the Irish. And ha- have a listen. Well, you should have done that yesterday. I wanted to look nice for Jack. Well, get yourself ready. You want the whole place laughing at us? I don't need to put on a skirt. Well, do so, please. And do something with your hair as well. Where's Rose? She's feeding the chickens. Oh, I suppose she looks like a mad woman as well. See, not that great. Sorry, Meryl. You're not as good as my other honourable mention for Irish accent. And it is Minnie Driver in Circle of Friends. Based on the best-selling book by Maeve Binchy, which uh, is not a movie that I've seen, although I have uh, uh, obtained it through completely legal means, and I will be watching it soon. Because what else are you going to do in a lockdown except to watch the movies? Have you ever gone all the way with a girl? No, not quite. Would you like to? What, now? No. No, it wasn't an invitation. Just, Just a request for information. Benny was a common girl from a quiet little town where friendship was forever. I was thinking we might have a party. We could invite all the boys. Were you thinking of anyone in particular, Benny? No, not at all. Not me. Now, I just want to mention two. Well, one is bad. And one, I think, is the worst attempt at someone else's accent that an actor has ever attempted. And it would have been better off if they didn't do it. One of them is Harrison Ford in a movie called K-19, The Widowmaker, with Liam Neeson, where he plays a Russian submarine commander. But unlike his father, Sean Connery, the late, great Sean Connery, who played a a Russian submarine commander in The Hunt for Red October and just did it as Connery does everything in his accent and was fantastic in that movie, for some reason, Harrison Ford, uh, I, I want to say attempts a Russian accent, but he doesn't really, he doesn't really do it. It's like, it's so barely there. It's almost like, what's the point? Why do it? Because like, we know you're Harrison Ford. We know you're from wherever you're from, Wisconsin or whatever, wherever the hell Harrison Ford is originally from, you know, middle America. He doesn't have like a strong American accent. He has, you know... Yes, he's uh, yeah, I'm Harrison Ford, and this is how I talk, and I'm, and I'm well, high as a kite right now. No, that sounds like he's doing a southern accent. I'll try it again. Uh, I'm Harrison Ford. This is how I, uh, mm, uh, where, where am I? Well, what, what am I doing here? I'm Harrison Ford, and he's trying, and you can kind, of, you can hear that he's trying. But it's so weak. Have a listen to this. This is a scene from K-19 where he's making a big speech to uh, his, uh, his fellow seamen. In the history of the Soviet Navy, no sailors have been given such a boat 
as K-19. It is the finest submarine in the world. You have been given the honor to be her crew. I have been given the honor to be your captain. Now, I hope you didn't giggle at the word seaman there because it can have more than one meaning, depending on the context. That was awful, but it's not as bad as what I think is the worst accent um, I've ever heard attempted by an actor. It's an American actor called Gene Hackman. Yes, Eugene, inverted commas, Gene Hackman in a movie called A Bridge Too Far, 1977's A Bridge Too Far, which is an all-star cast, including Sean Connery playing a an Englishman uh, with a Scottish accent. And Gene Hackman plays a Polish soldier. And his accent is just awful. He kind of hits... He mis it's almost sounds like he's mispronouncing words. And also you'll hear in this clip he sort of insults Polish people, which is, you know, he's playing a pole, insulting Poles, and it's just the worst. You know, he has a very distinctive kind of voice anyway, and it just it just sounds awful. Have a listen. Is something troubling you, General Sosovsky? I've said nothing. Precisely. Your silence is the thunderous. General Browning, I... I am a Pole. Considered by some to be smart. If that is so, it makes me member of a true minority group. Minority groups are more comfortable in silence. Really? I should have thought the opposite was true. But you do disapprove. I am thrilled that your great uh, Field Marshal Montgomery has devised such a plan. I promise you, I'll be properly ecstatic if it works. When it works? Of course. When it works. Thank you. Like, that is laughable. It's laughably bad. And I can't believe that even when they're on set, that they might have just went, look, just forget it. Let's n just not do, let's not even try. Because that's just off-putting. It's, you know, it just takes you straight out of the movie. It's like that movie, um, uh, Enemy at the Gates. Enemy at the Gates has Ed Harris playing a Nazi with an American accent. It has a whole bunch of English actors playing Russians with English accents. Bob Hoskins uh, plays a Russian and he just has his Bob Hoskins voice. And it's like a decision they made where they're like, OK, we're not even going to try because... There's no point in doing it kind of okay, but you can still kind of hear that someone, people are just going to be focusing on the fact that you're not 100% pulling off the accent. If you can't do it perfectly, then don't even try. That's what I say. And, you know, I'm willing to die on that hill. So, guys, uh, this has been an extra episode of the podcast. The regular episodes come out every Friday. These extra episodes... Uh, like this one that you just listened to, will only be available uh, on the Patreon page. If you want to subscribe, please do. If you don't, that's fine also. I'm just happy that you listened to it. Uh, if you have two minutes, because that's all it will take, you can give me a review. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you can give me a, a nice review, and that helps me out immensely, and that won't cost you any ducats, or any euros, or any uh, American dollars, or any... Uh, uh, Zlatskis or any Dutch guilders which don't exist anymore so uh, be safe be sound and I'll talk to you all soon bye Salmon of vanilla, just a salmon of knowledge, just a salmon of vanilla, just a salmon of knowledge, just a salmon of vanilla, just a salmon of knowledge podcast We're in the midst of a global pandemic. People have lost their jobs. People can't find jobs. Pubs have closed. People are locked in their homes. People are scared. The elderly are more vulnerable than ever. Now, more than ever, it's time to buy stuff. 
capitalism. If we don't keep buying things, it might collapse. And then where will we be? Who knows? Let's stop questioning our values and morals. And let's stop playing lip service to doing things differently. Hashtag thoughts and prayers. It's not enough. Sometimes you need to put your money where your pocket is. That's right. Capitalism. Keep going, guys. We need it. Give us your money, please. Lots of money. All your money now. Thank you. Paid for by capitalism. Without me, you are nothing. Without you, I am nothing. Much is expected of us. We will not fail.